Hi everyone, it's Jeannie from Kurt and Babble. If you're watching the replay, thanks for watching. And if you're watching live, welcome. Say hi, tell me where you're watching from. If you're watching the replay, if you could hit um, hashtag replay. Um, also, let's see if I can find this on here. I had to redo, if, no, I don't have it yet. Oh, yes, there it is. If you're watching on YouTube later, if you could subscribe to my channel, I'll love you forever. No, I really appreciate it. I, or, I, I already do love you <laughs> for reading Crate and Babble. Um, and if you are watching on Facebook, whether it's live or in a replay, if you could um, hit the share button, that would be wonderful. I'd appreciate that also. And I, hi Debbie, I keep forgetting to look over here into the camera because it's, it's just not natural to me. Whatever. So what I'm going to do today is make a pillow with one of the new, I'm so excited, the new, um, the new products for spring summer catalog launched on Monday and I have a few of them. So I want to, I hope this is one of them. I think it is. I don't have the new catalog up here with me, but it's the Be Fearless one and I'm super excited to make a pillow. So I'm going to be using Couture ink instead of chalk paste to make a pillow since we're using fabric. And if if you've not seen Chalk Couture on this um, page before on Crafts and DIY Ideas from Create and Babble, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Chalk Couture first. And um, let me just say, Chalk Couture is, and I'm not saying this just because, you know, I, I'm, I'm with Chalk Couture, but it seriously is the hottest trend in the easy DIY high-end home decor world. We offer a line of silkscreen um, adhesive-backed, reusable, that's the key word, transfers that you use with either chalk paste or couture ink. Today we're using the ink and the ink is permanent and the ink is used on things like fabric like what we're using today. So we'll we'll talk a bit about a bit more about that as we go along. Chalk couture also sells um, a lot of different surfaces that you can use and you can also use your own surfaces like your dishwasher like me <laughs> or kitchen cabinets or walls or mirrors or windows anything really I can't think of a thing that you really can't use with Chalk Couture to make beautiful high-end home decor and gifts with. So let's come back to me and let's do put me in the corner and why does that look fuzzy? Is that fuzzy? Does that look like let me see it on here. No that looks okay on here. I don't know why that looks I don't know, it looks fuzzy on my iPad screen. I'll just ignore that. But here is the transfer. And this one's called Be Fearless, and it actually has two designs on it. It has the Be Fearless at the top, and it has, I'm gonna take that away, that, that's better. Um, a second one on the bottom that says, Courage, comma, Dear Heart, and that's a quote by C.S. Lewis. So you actually get more than one design with this. So I am going to move my stuff out of the way and get started making my pretty pillow. Because I am getting ready, it's early, it's only February, but you know, the groundhog didn't see his shadow, so spring's on its way, you guys. Now, for Debbie down in Alabama, she's already has warm temperature. Us up here in the Northeast, it's winter. And, um, Punxsutawney Phil, that groundhog who didn't see his shadow, is um, not far from where I grew up, actually, in that part of the western part of the state. Now, I know that there are a lot of um, false prophet um, groundhogs that may have had a different, a different forecast, but I only go by Punxsutawney Phil. It's <laughs> kind of silly, isn't it? But... That's been going on forever. What I'm doing is I'm cutting apart this transfer because I'm going to just use the top portion of it. I'm going to put this one aside and I'm going to flip it over and write 
back on the back of this with a Sharpie that I misplaced. Oh, come on. Oh, here it is. <laughs> and I'm going to write, I could write back, but I'm going to write, be fearless so I know which transfer goes on this backing paper. A beeping you're hearing is my Cricut Easy Press heating up because that's how we heat set the ink. But we'll get to that. All right, there is my transfer cut apart and here is my pillow cover. This is a Chocotour uh, brand canvas lumbar pillow cover. We also sell square ones. It's nice today. It was nice here yesterday, but I missed it. They're telling me that it was like in the low 60s. I never even walked out my front door. I was so busy that I missed the 60 degree day. Doesn't that figure? I had no idea it was that nice, but I was just I was just busy all day long. All right, here's that lumbar pillow, and then I get the pillow inserts from Amazon. If you just Google on Amazon, I'll put a link to them too. Um, the the lumbar pillow inserts, but it's really nice. It's a nice weight. Um, you can't see through it or anything. This is a really nice weight, and it's canvas. And it's wrinkled, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in a minute why that doesn't matter. And the zipper, I'm going to. Oh, and look, cute little chocolate tag there. I'm going to leave the zipper at the bottom when I'm placing this on. And here's why I don't worry about those wrinkles so much. Because I'm going to insert on the inside an ink mat. And it's not going to be long enough, so I'll have to use two pieces. And what this does is it prevents the ink from going through the inside and onto the back of your pillow cover. You don't want that to happen. So, um, and as you're adhering that fabric down onto, I'm putting this inside, you can smooth out the wrinkles. So that's why I said the wrinkles don't matter. Um, that surface is sticky of that ink mat, and so I just rub because I've been tempted. OCD me to iron the pillow cover before I ink, and then I thought that's silly. Okay, I'm gonna move this over, and I need to put more ink mat down because this is cut into pieces to fit various surfaces that I ink. Like I use this on tea towels and onesies and t-shirts for my granddaughter, that kind of thing. All right, I'm going to get that one in there and get this. Get these wrinkles out. And then as I'm laying this down, I also want to make sure that that ink pad is where I need it to be under the design. Okay. I just love this. I love this quote or whatever you want to call it. Be fearless. I think it's going to mean different things to different people. Um, and no matter what stage of life you're in, um, I think this is going to have a meaning to everybody. Don't you? And I love, I love the arrows. Arrows are... They're just so popular, right? Very trendy. And of course, handwritten fonts. Need I say more about handwritten fonts on how popular they are? So I'm gonna remove this transfer that's very sticky because it's brand new from the backing. Being careful not to let it fold onto itself. See, look how sticky it is. It is sticking to my fingers. Lift this over. I could have done it the other way. And then kind of eyeball the center of this. Make sure I am over my ink mat from side to side and top to bottom. So I'm peeking in here just to make sure I'm good. Then what I'm going to do is grab a scraper. I had one here. It was like a big... Um, squee 
RPG. I could actually just use one. Oh, here it is. Use this. This big squeegee from Chocotour really helps to get this smoothed down. Because you don't want any air bubbles because the ink would run through and you'd have smudges. And we don't want smudges. Um, ink is not as forgiving as the chalk paste. Ink is permanent. Once you get it on, it's pretty much permanent. And then, I, I mean, I've, made, I've done oops before and gotten them off with hairspray and with um, a bottle with it right next to me of hydrogen peroxide <laughs> because I do mess up. Um, we'll get it off before you heat set it, but once it's heat set with an iron or a heat press, it's on there to stay. It's it's not coming out. So you just wanna you wanna be really careful. A lot of times, if I have a workshop and my clients are here and they're using ink, I will encourage them to put another border of painters tape around, especially if there's not a lot of margin here. I'm going to be brave today and not do that. <laughs> I'm going to take a chance. Here's how I look at it. I have another side to this pillow. <laughs> so if I mess it up horribly, <laughs> I have another chance. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, that's me. I live on the edge. All right. So what I'm doing now is grabbing a squeegee and then the ink that I'm using. And this ink is called Couture Coral. That's a really pretty pinkish kind of color, but it is more coral than it is pink. It is really pretty. And here's why um, I've been, on my bed right now is still my Christmas comforter because it's wintery. It's not so much Christmas as it is wintery. And I'm like itching to get that off and get the white comforter back on and get the pretty pastel colors. So this is gonna go, not with the bedding that's on my bed now, for sure, but it's gonna go with this, with the regular white and pastel -y colors. So what I'm gonna do is grab this squeegee, grab some chalk, or not chalk, some ink from my jar, and I'm gonna smooth it over the open areas of this transfer. Now here is a thing that is kind of a tip that's that I heard and it is really helpful when you're working with the ink there's less chance of it bleeding under if you start the process off of the silk screen area in other words start it on the teal color of the transfer um, and pull it let me go somewhere where you can see like start up here and pull it down over rather than starting in the middle of a sun of a uh, silk screen so that's what I try to do. I try to start on the teal portion of the transfer and then go over the open transfer areas. Okay? I have three jars of this ink, so I have plenty. So there I started off and pull it down. Off and pull it over. Now, the ink you don't need to be as quick about as you do chalk paste. Chalk paste, you got to move rather quickly. Um, ink has a longer drying time, so you don't need to work as quickly. So I'm going to go from end to the middle and then end to the middle over here. So I'm going to start on the teal part and pull it over. And try not to go over the edge. And hope that I've got it smoothed down there well enough that we're not gonna have any issues. And then I'm gonna look it over to make sure I don't have any silk screen areas that I missed, any like white popping through. I think I've got it all covered. And then I'm looking for places where I have a little extra ink. And Scrape that back into my jar. That's it. Now I'm going to make sure there's no ink on my hands because I've done this. I go to peel off the transfer and I've got ink on my hands and I get it somewhere where it doesn't belong. And I'm going to grab an edge. 
and peel it off. Oh, I got some smudgies. But not too, too bad. Isn't that pretty? I love the color. So here is my transfer. I'm just going to put this to the side. Because you know what I'm going to do. I am, well, yeah, I'm going to put this in a pan of water that I have beside me. After this dries, I am going to heat it up. Well, actually, I could help it, help the drying process with this dryer. I don't know why that smudged a little bit there. You all saw me. Maybe I just didn't push down hard enough right there at the edge of that F. But it's still, you still know what it says. It's not bad. And I could go in if I wanted to and clean that up. But I'm fine with it. But I think I am going to use the other end of that for... The other side of the pillow. Why not? Be fearless and then courage, dear heart. Why not? So that's why I'm going to dry this. I'm lifting it up away from the ink mat because I noticed that if I get that ink mat with this dryer with the heat, it kind of warps it a little bit. <laughs> so I'm trying not to do that. And I don't want to flip this pillow cover over until this is dry. And it'll be tacky for a little bit first before it dries. Yeah, it's still tacky. It is pretty. I love this color. Isn't this color? I'm disappointed that I didn't, that I got, I got a little bit of smudge here and on the A, but I must have missed it. I must have missed getting that down tight. That's all I can think of. You just can't be too careful with the ink. But I love this font. This font's really pretty. Very on trend with the handwritten font look. Love a two-sided pillow. Me too. Me too, for sure. And I might do a different color on the other side. Maybe I'll do the couture teal, since I have couture coral on one side. And those go with my bedroom colors. Oh, has anybody, oh, my Instant Pot's going downstairs. Has anybody made those um, egg bites in their Instant Pot yet? You know, the kind that Starbucks sells? I'm making them for the first time. So I'm anxious to see how those turn out. I found a recipe online, of course. I'm anxious to try those. And... Hopefully this is dry enough. I'm going to say it is. <laughs> it's probably not, but I'm going to say it is. That's me living on the edge. So I'm going to flip this over. Get my ink mat back in here. On the other side. I think it's dry enough that it won't smudge. I hope so. Yeah, it seems fine. Oh, but here's that thing I was looking for. I'm gonna smooth this out. Get the wrinkles out as best I can and grab this part of the transfer and I'm gonna write courage on the back so I know which transfer goes on which backing sheet. And this time, I can't remove it from that side. I've tried. I have to remove it from the front. 
if I get it started. There we go. C.S. Lewis, like I can't tell you. Well, let's see. Narnia, I think he wrote that. Let's get this centered. Courage, dear heart. I think you do need courage to be fearless, right? So it kind of goes together. And I like that they have C.S. Lewis down here. That's kind of cool. Now I'm going to... You're watching me. You're seeing me. Paying great deal of attention to this. I found this scraper thing. It's it's harder plastic than the squeegee, so maybe that'll get a better seal on this adhesive. But there could have been a wrinkle there too that I didn't get out. I'm going in every direction. Wow, I'm about to mess up. Okay. I really can't get it down any more than that. It's down. I hope I didn't miss any places. And I hope there's no wrinkles going to cause a problem. Maybe you should arm first. Huh. Well, let me grab a new color. Let's go with that Couture's heel, I think. Yeah. And it matches the transfer. You could always do C.S. Lewis in a different color, but I'm doing it all the same. Unless I don't have much in here, then we're not doing it. Oh, no, we're good. And typically the inks don't need stirred, but I'm doing it anyway because I just want to make sure it's not drying out or anything weird. And grab another squeegee. And I'm going to pull from, see, I don't know if it's better to pull from the side, pull from the top. I don't know. I don't know if it matters. Maybe people that have been doing it longer have a better sense of that. But I'm going to go from the top to the bottom the whole way across and see how that goes. All right, here we go. I'm starting off and pulling down over. And then I'm scraping off the excess. Same thing there. I don't have any open areas. So I think I've got it all covered. And I do have ink on my hand, so I'm not gonna touch this pillow cover yet until I get that off. Down to the bottom of the barrel on this container of Clorox wipes, and you know what that means. There's a lot of liquid at the bottom. All right, I'm gonna dry them. And seal. Courage, comma. Lewis, C.S. Lewis. Dear heart, perfect, perfect. Isn't that font pretty? I don't know if you can see the C.S. Lewis at the bottom because it's pretty small, but I love it. Let me get this. 
I hope my other side's still good. Yep, it's still good. Love it. Let me move this out of the way. That's, that's an accident waiting to happen right there. With <laughs> my jar of ink right beside me. <laughs> yes, and now I have a really pretty two-sided pillow. I'm going to dry this side. I'm going to have to look up this, this quote by C.S. Lewis, Cards to Your Heart, and find out where that's from. If that's um, what story or that's from. Because I don't know. Maybe somebody out there knows. And I'll look it up. Yeah, I love it. I love this, Debbie. Really pretty. It's a different... I think the font is a little different from the other side, but not too different. So what I'll do is dry this and then get a piece of parchment paper Put it over top and get out my easy press. I gotta turn that back on actually. So here's the crazy thing, and I was telling Debbie this earlier. I'm going to a scrapbooking week or yeah, a scrapbooking weekend this weekend. I've been to these. I go to this one every year. Um and I'm thinking about not taking scrapbooking stuff, I'm taking Taking sewing stuff and taking chocolate tour stuff instead. You, I mean, you can do whatever you want. There, there's no police there saying, no, you have to scrapbook. <laughs> the scrapbook police are not there. <laughs> but the creative memory ladies are. But you can work on whatever craft you want to. A lot of people go and they do nothing but make cards. Um, I, I just see so many different things going on. A lot of people, I see this. I don't get it, but it doesn't mean that it's not cool. As they do... Um, What's it called? Electronic scrapbooking? Where all of their pages are on the computer. They're not printed out. That's different. Um, I, lo I like the old fashioned scrapbooks where you flip the pa paper page. But to each his own. I mean, they've got, I see them set up at their tables and they've got multiple screens going on. They're, they're serious about it. They're, they're serious, and I bet you, I've not looked at their stuff because I don't know these people, but um, I would love to like flip through. There's, they probably have beautiful work, and here's why I don't want to look. Because <laughs> I'm afraid I'd really like it and I'd want to do it, and I've got enough going on. <laughs> that's, that's why <laughs> it's a creative weekend is right, Debbie. But I'm afraid that I would really like it, and it's like, oh, I want to do that too. Because I see the card making me, oh, I want to make, I see the next shiny thing. And I know me. <laughs> I'm going to stick to this. <laughs> I got a quilt that needs worked on. And I'm enjoying it so much. And um, I just think it would be awesome to have a whole three-day weekend devoted. Yeah, I know, serious. To have a whole weekend devoted to that is a great opportunity to get, to knock that out. If I could knock that out, maybe I should take the other quilt that needs finished that I started 20 years ago. Seriously. Like I was telling, I was talking to Debbie about it. It's like I could hire that out. The only thing that needs done on that quilt is the binding. Why don't I send that out for somebody to do? I could hire somebody to do that affordably. But here's the thing I was telling, I have done every stitch, every cut of that quilt by myself and I am not giving it away to someone else to finish at this point because I want to be able to say I made this quilt from start from the very first square that was cut out with a rotary cutter and a mat to the very last hand quilt it's this isn't machine quilted I hand quilted this thing and so at this stage of the game I'm not I just want to be able to say I did it start to finish. Now for this small quilt that I'm making now, I it's for a Cricut and I cut out the Cricut maker and I want to do, oh my gosh, life changing. 
cutting out all of the squares and half square triangles with the Cricut Maker, I did it in a couple hours versus weeks of cutting out by hand. And here, here's another thing. They're all perfectly evenly cut. There's like no off. Like a close, there's no close enough with it. You know, the, the maker cuts it exact. So there's, was, that, that was pretty impressive, actually. Okay, that's dry. Yeah, that's dry enough. So I'm going to take out the ink mat on the inside. And then I'm not, I won't wipe this with a, a just a wet, just a wet rag will clean that up. So I'm putting that to the side. You don't want to use anything else on there but water. Now I'm going to grab my... Um, piece of parchment paper up here and my easy press and put that on 305 for 30 seconds let's go heat her up and then I'll move it oh you know what I forgot to put the mat under here like wait I missed this step I'm going to end up melting my craft mat under there there we go bang yeah, I can't. Yeah, oh, the quilt, that'd be, yeah. <sighs> we just won't be able to look at it too closely because, boy, I, I thought about this too as I was sewing the, the squares together was those points don't match. If another quilter looked at this, they'd be like, you know, honey, you need to take that apart and redo it so the points all match up. Uh-uh. I'm not, I'm not that precise. I'm like, Debbie, your mom would probably say, no, that's, that's not, that doesn't cut it. <laughs> but to me, it cuts it. Let's look at the, let's look at the other side and hope I didn't mess that up. No, I didn't. Good. <sighs> yeah, close enough works for me. That I just don't know how they get. And here, these these pieces were cut so precisely with the maker. And I have um, the presser foot on my sewing machine has the quarter inch guide. So I know my seams are perfectly one quarter inch. Why they're not, why some of them got off. I have no idea. And heat up this side. Then we're done. I should have brought a, a pillow in here, but um, I didn't. I'll post pictures then later. You think she's like, you'll have to show her, Debbie, when it's done. You'll have to show her. Just don't let her look close. <laughs> yep, there we go. It is done. So I've got Courage, Dear Heart, C.S. Lewis, and then Be Fearless on the other side. Awesome. All right, so I'll take pictures of it after it's stuffed and on my bed. I have a pillow form over there somewhere. And post pictures. And I have links, too, that I'll put on there. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day.